Okay, so we're going to now discuss centering and singing together. Now, the state overall has five components. Highest intention or intention, centering, sensing, sinking, and seeing. Now, in order for you guys to develop as best as possible, I'm putting pieces of the state together in segments so you can start to unify it all into the state, which is the whole thing, where you're centered, upright, nice tall spine, you're sensing your whole body nice and relaxed and calm, yes, you're aware, you're releasing, relaxing, any tensions and letting go, you're focused into the target and connected to the opponent, and overall that comes together into the state which allows you to manifest as much power as possible from your body and connect to another person so that you can use that for self-defense. Uh, but also it allows you to start to train the mind, the emotions, the body, and your energy so that you can uplift your life. So you can just feel good in life and also move towards your spiritual intention as well. So the two that we're bringing together now is centering, so the centering component. Remember, we did that in previous lessons where you draw up, sense your center, and visualize it filled with uh, you know, white light as a basic beginning. And then seeing is the visual component, which we normally bring in at the end of our state training. But what the visual component is, so you know, if, if Carlson imagines white light in his whole body, and then imagines that white light all targeted to a line in front of him, like as an image, right? So white body, and those lines are all focused to there. Now this is a foundational and basic component of seeing uh, or visualization uh, in relationship to the state in Wing Chun. However, it can evolve and you can use it in multiple ways, whether you imagine a sun behind you shining through you or whether you wanna uh, visualize water flowing through your body. There's a lot to it. Um, if you wanna go deeper into the state, uh, training in regards to seeing or any of the components, you've got the state training course in the classroom section of the of the of our app of the school app in our community. So you know if you want to go deeper, go there. However, coming back to what we're working on today, uh, in regards to seeing, you're already using the visual component when you center anyway. So when you center yourself, the the fundamentals are again. Okay, Taigong, so softly drop the anus, make sure everything's relaxed around the whole hip girdle so you're not tensing up anywhere, but a soft drawing up. So it's not even tense, it's like a soft drawing up. Now, just one quick note on that, because oftentimes people get a little confused with tension and relaxation. So your muscles still activate and they still work. It's not like your muscles don't activate at all, because if they did, you'd just be a sack of shit on the floor. You'd have, you wouldn't, you know, be able to move if your muscles didn't activate. And I remember my master was doing a move, like I think he was doing like this move, like the uh, flapping hand bridge coming down. And I was like feeling his body, like just trying to feel how his body, you know, moves under the states. You know, when you're moving from mind power, how does your body move? So oftentimes we'd be you know, touching and feeling how his body felt. And I felt activity, I felt like a tension, in my mind I thought it was tension, in his muscles, right? It was still extremely powerful, right? So I was still feeling like, oh, it was still fucking throwing me around. But um, I was like, oh, Sigul, there's some tension here in your body when you do this movement. And the way he explained it is that it's not tension so much, it's more activity. So if you think about like a heavy bag, right, which is hanging up with ropes, the rope isn't tense, it's just active. There's like a, there's a force being applied to it, so there's activity in it. So that's the same thing with your muscles. So, you know, you wanna uh, keep in mind that your muscles will have a level of activity, except you just want to release any tension from them as you go forward. Now, the reason I share that is because when someone does Tai Gong, often they'll go, oh, so do I tense it? No, you have a sense of activity, yeah? It's like that lifting up of, or the carrying of the bag concept. So you draw up Tai Gong as a foundational part, you sense your whole center, and you see it as well, right? So you Tai Gong, sense your center, and see it filled with light. Now, already now, as you center yourself, you can, you know, uh, already see that you're already using the visual energy in your center, right? But now let's bring it into the actual way we use it uh, in the state, you imagine the light in front of you as well. So it's kind of like an 11, in the sense that if Carson, you face me, please, from where you are, and you imagine a line of light in Carson's center, you imagine a line of light in my center from his visualization, so it's like this, yep, I mean, like this, right? So he sees 
this line and he centers himself simultaneously. Further to that, you know, the foundational image that I suggest people use initially is their body filled with a white light and all of that light being targeted to this line. Now, for the beginners, that's pretty basic. Think of it like that, like a triangular prism of, of white light into this line. Now, for the more advanced practitioners, as you see that line of light in your center, think of a, a stronger line projecting towards this line. So you still have the triangular prism, but there's a stronger bright light from center to center. Now that line of energy here, you want uh, of intention uh, directing the visualization, you want everything to funnel into that line. So everything from my whole space funnels into the center. So it funnels into that center plane so that when so that when I make a connection with Carlson, if he's trying to stop me coming through, there's a, a connection from my center to his center, yeah? So if he's trying to actually stop me, yeah? okay. so try to stop me, yeah? yeah? So as I come through towards you, yeah. so you're, what do you want me to say? Try to actually stop, oh, stop me. You're, you're pushing my hand no, off no, to the no, side, no, no. Yeah. which is fine. Push it off to the side if you want. So push it to the side, do what you were doing, right? And I'm still gonna come through anyway, right? But I want you to try and stop me coming through this line, right? So as I go through towards you, so then you can see that there's a connection to center. So everything's funneling from my center, everything's funneling from my center into his center, yeah? From this projection from center to center, which is what? It's, uh, maybe turn up. It's you centering yourself and feeling the center. And then from that, you imagine the directionality of that to the other person's center, yeah? So like a flow from here to here. So maybe face the camera again. A flow from his center towards the center of the opponent. So center to center. So we want to bring these together just like we want to bring together the actual whole state. Now, the reason I broke it into pieces is because it's easier to work with smaller chunks uh, and then, you know, add them together overall through time. So, you know, you, you basically learn the guard, you learn the stance, you learn to punch, you're learning a chunk, of a piece of the state, and then adding it together with another piece so that ultimately we can bring it all together. So, in summary, what I'd like us to work on in our next videos is centering ourselves and then seeing that line in front of us and building that connection between the two so that it's not just, okay, I'm centered only or I'm seeing only, which doesn't operate as well. Um, for example, Carson faces me and he, if he just focuses only on the target, right? Let's say he goes to, makes a fist and he goes to only focus on the target and he goes to punch towards me, right? It has a certain effect, right? Because he's focused just on the target only. Now, if he, uh, centers himself nice and tall, feels his center, and now focuses his center to the target as he does the same movement, yeah, there's, I can already feel there's a lot more power generated. How do you feel? A lot more effortless. As effortless well. as well, there you go. So I've got more power, he got more effortless. So that's moving in the right direction. Okay, so that's some concepts uh, and a bit of theory around centering and seeing and how they work together. Uh, if you do have any questions, once again, put them in the community and we'll answer them for you. And I look forward to seeing you in our next video.